Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on translating words into math. Here's what you'll learn. How to translate words into numbers, variables, and operations. You know, in all of my years, I've had very few conversations with people where they actually provided me with a mathematical expression to solve. However, I have had a lot of conversations with people where they did expect me to solve a mathematical expression, they just never gave me the problem in mathematical form. Instead, they talked with me and described the problem they were trying to solve, and it was my job to interpret what they were saying and turn their words into a solvable math problem. That's what it means to translate words into math. And you're probably already familiar with many words that translate into math. For example, can you think of words you know that mean add? Well, how about plus? increase or increased by, some, more than, add. When you hear these words, you should be thinking addition because they imply you're putting things together. Can you think of words you know that mean subtract? How about minus, decrease or decreased by, difference, less than, take away, even the word itself, subtract. When you hear those words, you're thinking subtraction because they imply you're finding out how much more or a difference between numbers. Can you think of words you know that mean multiply? How about times? Multiplied by? Product? Even the word multiply. When you hear those words, you're thinking multiplication because they imply you're going to be putting equal parts together multiple or repeated numbers of times. Can you think of words you know that mean divide? How about divided into or divided by? The word quotient, divide, even the word per mean division. And when you hear those words, you should be thinking division because they imply you're separating things into equal parts. Can you think of words you know that mean equal? How about the word total? Or result? Is? How about the word was? Past tense of is. Gives? When you hear those words, you're thinking equal because they imply you're coming up with a final answer. Now let's translate some verbal expressions into algebraic expressions. Let's write the following phrase as an algebraic expression. The product of 15 and a number m. First of all, product means multiply. So we're asked to multiply two factors, 15 and m. And we know that's just 15m. Let's try this one. A number increased by 3. The words increased by indicate addition, so we're being asked to add a number and three together. Since we aren't given the number or variable they want us to add to three, we can pick our own variable, and in this case I'll pick the letter H. So we'll have H plus three. Now here's a warning, common error ahead, please pay attention to this. The words more than and less than require us to write our expression in a certain order. To properly translate 10 more than 3, we write 3 plus 10, not 10 plus 3. Now certainly for addition, 3 plus 10 will give us the same answer as 10 plus 3. However, we run into real problems when we work with the words less than. If we have the words 4 less than 10, 4 minus 10 is a very different answer than 10 minus 4. So writing algebraic expressions in the proper order is very important. But we can always get it right. Here's how. When you see the words more than or less than, you should put the number in front of those words behind the operation. 9 more than y is y plus 9. 9 less than y is y minus 9. Now let's continue. Write the following phrase as an algebraic expression. 33 more than a number d. 
The words more than indicate addition, so we're being asked to add 33 and a number together. However, the words more than imply a special order. In order to have 33 more than D, we must already have a D. So the correct way to write the algebraic expression is D plus 33, not 33 plus D. How about the quotient of 6 and C plus 31? Well, we know a quotient is the result of a division problem. So we can write 6 divided by C first. Then plus means add. So we're going to add 31 to that. And that's our algebraic expression for those words. How about this one? 12 less than the sum of a number G and 7. The words less than indicate subtraction. And we know that the number 12 is going to go after the subtraction operation because of what we just learned about the words less than. So let's write 12 less than first. That is minus 12. Now we're subtracting 12 from what? It says from a sum, specifically the sum of g and 7. So we just write down g plus 7 in front of the minus 12, and we're done. How about three times the difference of a number and 2? Times means multiply, so we're going to multiply 3 by another number. So let's start by writing down the 3. Now the 3 is being multiplied by a difference, the difference of a number, and we can use a variable r in this case, and 2. So let's write down the difference between r and 2 is r minus 2. But because we're multiplying 3 by a difference, we have to find the difference first. So to make sure we find the difference first, the order of operations tells us we should put parentheses around the r minus 2 like this. And that's our algebraic expression for those words. How about this one? The difference of 3 times a number and 2. Now this problem sounds and looks very similar to the example we just completed. 3 times the difference of a number and 2. However, there's a big difference in the way we're going to set this one up. The words the difference are located in different parts of the verbal expression, and that changes the way we set up the mathematical expression. We know we're going to have a difference, so start by writing down a subtraction sign. Then we have to determine what we're subtracting. The problem says 3 times a number. Let's use the letter R to represent the number. So there's 3 times r and 2. So the 2 goes after the subtraction sign. And that's our algebraic expression. Let's say Bobby reads P pages of Harry Potter in the Order of Phoenix every day. The book has 766 pages. We want to write an algebraic expression representing how many days it will take him to read his book. First, we need to determine what kind of mathematical operations will be required to solve this problem. Well, since Bobby is reading an equal number of pages, P, every day, he's dividing the book into equal parts. So the operation is division. So you take the whole book, all 766 pages, and you divide it by P. And there's your algebraic expression for all those words. How about this one? To rent a car for a day costs $74 plus 42 cents for every mile driven. Write an algebraic expression to show how much it costs to rent the car for three days. Okay, we know the fixed cost for each day is $74. That means we're going to add $74 to our cost for every day we have this car. Repeated addition is just multiplication. So since the rentals for three days, we're going to start by writing down $74 times three. Now the problem says plus 42 cents for every mile driven. 
So we're going to include an addition sign in our expression. And since we'll be adding 42 cents for every mile we drive, this is just another repeated addition term or another multiplication problem. We write 42 cents as 0 0.42 and use a variable m for the number of miles that we've driven. Then the cost for any number of miles driven is 0 0.42 times m or we write it like this and we add the amount to our fixed cost. Multiplying 74 and 3 gives us $222 so we can simplify this expression and write it as $222 plus 0.42 m and that's our algebraic expression for that word problem. Congratulations! You've learned how to translate words into numbers, variables, and operations.